Hi everybody, Jeremy here. Welcome back to the channel. By now, I'm sure that you're aware that you can make a lot of money in the stock market. There are literally tens of thousands of stocks you can buy all around the world. And not every one of those stocks is a good investment. And that's what we're gonna talk about today, guys. I'm gonna go through the five things I look for in any business before I consider investing. And stick around because one of these tips is fundamental to getting high returns. Tip number one, invest in businesses with a competitive advantage. And when you think about it, this one's pretty straightforward. You want to invest in quality businesses. More importantly, you want to invest in businesses that have an advantage over their competitors. And why does this matter so much? Well, if they have an advantage over their competitors, it means they're likely to be able to generate higher returns. And if a company keeps making higher and higher returns, it means the share price is going to go up, up, up. And as investors, that's what we want to see. And simply all a competitive advantage is a condition or a circumstance that means that business has a more favorable position over its competitors. And a great example of this is Apple. Apple is now one of the most dominant businesses in the world. But Apple has not always been the powerhouse that it is now. Throughout the 80s and 90s and most of the early 2000s, Apple bubbled along and nearly went out of business on more than one occasion. But then Apple hit an absolute home run. It developed the first iPhone bringing the smartphone to market. And guess what? The price of Apple shot through the roof and has continued to go up and up and up. And this is a classic example of a competitive advantage. For a period, the only smartphone you could buy was Apple. Phone companies of the likes of Motorola and Nokia who had previously held significant market share struggled to keep pace. And it was years until a viable alternative to the iPhone was released to the market. And by that time, Apple was streets ahead. And that's something they were able to capitalize on to continue to grow their bottom line and overall their share price. Apple is but one example. There are literally thousands out there in the market. I mean, when was the last time you logged on to your MySpace account? But we're just gonna have a quick break guys so everyone can have an opportunity to invest in this channel by smashing that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It's a really small investment guys, but it does have a really high returns to my channel and I greatly appreciate it. Thanks for doing that. Let's get back into it. Number two, pick businesses that are relevant to the times. Just because a business was once dominant or was once successful doesn't mean it will always be successful. Competitive advantages and organization strengths change over time and not always for the better. The world changes and you need to be mindful of companies that don't innovate and don't stay relevant to the times. A great example of this is Kodak. Kodak was once the leading film provider for cameras all around the world. And then the digital camera was invented and people didn't need film anymore. And in a similar respect, mass market digital cameras aren't really a thing anymore either. These days, most people take pictures on one of these. Times change and businesses need to change with the times to stay relevant. Number three, don't just gravitate to popular stocks. And this is an easy trap for new investors to fall into. There are certain stocks that get a lot more media attention than others. And hey, if the people are talking about them, they must be good investments. That's not the case though. Businesses don't need to be glamorous to be good investments. We're always hearing things about Google, Amazon, Facebook. And while all of these companies are dominant for their own reasons, it doesn't mean they're necessarily a good investment right now. Often because stocks like these, their price is so high, there's just not a lot of additional value in there for an investor just getting into the market. Now, it's not to say that any of those companies won't continue to go up. As I said, they are dominant companies, but they just don't present a lot of value for investors. And for that reason, I often gravitate towards investing in what I'd call pretty boring companies. And no, I'm not talking about Elon Musk and the boring company. I'm talking about stocks that produce services and products that you use every day that you probably don't think about. I get that Apple is a sexy company, but at the end of the day, you don't need an iPhone. What you do need, however, is someone to collect your trash. It's not glamorous, but there's an underlying need. I also don't think there's a whole lot of people rushing out there to start their own garbage collection company. And these are just some funny examples, but I'm trying to illustrate the point. Don't get sucked into only wanting to invest in the big hype and glamorous stocks. There are plenty of companies out there providing products and services that you probably use every day. Don't just limit yourself investing into those cool stocks that everyone's talking about. There are good investment opportunities literally everywhere. And in many respects, the boring companies can be diamonds in the rough. Number three, pick businesses that are profitable. I don't know about you, but I'm investing to make money. To do that, I need businesses that also make money. 
If that business is making money regularly, they're gonna be paying dividends to their shareholders and their stock price is gonna to continue to grow. But in the current age of massive IPO launches with huge media presence, it's very easy to get sucked into investing into these new startup companies that actually have no proven track record of making money. Oh, but Jeremy, this stock is listed at 20 cents and they're saying the earnings are gonna to grow to exponentially. It's gonna be worth $8 a share in six months time. Yes, in rare circumstances that can happen, but that doesn't necessarily mean the business is profitable. And where you stand on this really comes down to your investing style. For me personally, I'm a long-term investor. I'm not looking to buy and flip stocks for a quick profit. That's just not how I like to invest. I prefer to buy quality businesses that present value and hold them long-term. And whilst you may consider this a very boring investment strategy, and in a lot of respects it is, it's also one of the proven ways to generate wealth long-term. I'm just not that interested in trying to get rich quick. I'm quite happy to get rich slowly. Number four, pick businesses that you use and love. Now this one almost seems a little bit too simple, but think about it. If you use a particular product or service and like using that, you're more likely to recommend that to a friend or a family if they have a need for that particular product. In a similar fashion, if you have a horrible experience with something, you're not gonna recommend that to a friend. And I find this is a really great way to sanity check an investment opportunity. If you used to be a customer of a particular bank and you've since changed providers because you've had a horrible experience or their product offering is terrible, they're probably not a great investment. But in a similar fashion, if you've just moved to a different bank and they do offer great products and great service and you've had a great experience, well, there's a chance then that that business is going to generate more customers. More customers means more revenue and an opportunity to drive higher products at a higher return. Use your own personal experiences to guide your investment decisions. Well, guys, I said one of these tips was more valuable than all the others. And here it is, number five, invest in businesses that present value. Now, I think one of the most common misconceptions of people that are entering the stock market is that the market is always fairly priced. And that just isn't the case. Regardless of the economic conditions, any business can potentially be overvalued, undervalued, or fair value. And the analogy I'm gonna use is this. If you walk into a shop and you wanna buy a particular item and there's two different models, but one's on sale and one isn't, which one are you gonna pick? Hopefully you're picking the one that's on sale because why would you spend more money if you didn't have to? Well, guess what everybody? The stock market works exactly the same way. At any point in time, there are stocks that are on sale. For me personally, I'm always looking to buy undervalued stocks. This is because there's a higher chance that that stock is going to increase in value in a relatively short period of time. And that means I'm more likely to get a higher return on my investment, which at the end of the day, that's the aim of the game. And while this strategy does require a little bit of research and patience, and is quite frankly, a bit boring at times, it's also the strategy that the likes of Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, Ray Dalio, etc., have built their billion dollar fortunes on. And while I'm not a world-class investor like they are by any means, if it works for Warren, it can work for me and it can certainly work for you. Well guys, that's my five key tips. I hope you found some value in this. If you have any of your own tips, please comment down below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. If you haven't already guys, please like the video. It really does help out the channel and I greatly appreciate it. Thanks again for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.